I call this for April 2023 Plan and Zoning Commission meeting to order at 7 p.m. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Charbonneau, could you lead us in the pledge? Yes. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mr. Clerk, could you please take a roll call? Uh, certainly. Hornseth. Present. Charbonneau? Here. Staggs? Here. Allman? Here. Monaco? Here. Verge? Here. And Chair Sullivan? Here. Okay, you have a quorum. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, we'll move on to citizens' comments, which is number four. Um, there'll be uh, citizens' comments on any subject except those items scheduled for public hearing, and we have four of those. Uh, those who have signed in will be given the first opportunity to speak, and time is limited to three minutes per speaker and 36 minutes total for this for this agenda item. Do we have anybody signed in? Uh, nobody has signed in on the sheet. Okay. Anybody like to talk? Nope. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on from there. <laughs> Okay, then we'll move on to the next item, is uh, the approval of the agenda and consent agenda. I need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda. Whole second. Okay. Are there any changes to the agenda? Anything we have? No? Okay. Mr. Clerk, can we have a roll call regarding the uh, agenda and consent agenda? Okay, voting to approve the agenda and the consent agenda. Verge? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. Allman? Yes. Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, your agenda and consent agenda have been approved, and on the consent agenda was the approval of the February 7th, 2023 meeting minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have a special orders, presentations, and reports, and it doesn't appear we have any pro proclamations or awards. Um, uh, the, so the next item is the city administration report, and I'll turn it over to Community Development Director Jason Bickley. Uh, thank you. Uh, good to see everyone. Good to see uh, all the full chairs and, and everyone back. So looking forward to um, kind of the this, this spring and summer season and getting a lot done. And I did want to make a note that obviously uh, Courtney is not here this evening. Uh, she's attending the, uh, the National Planning Conference in Philadelphia. And, uh, but we do have uh, Juan Lee on the phone. Um, she's kind of our backup planner uh, with our engineering group. Uh, from R and M. So, if we do have a, if we do have questions, she is available uh, on that level. And then um, I did I think uh, I did include this originally in February, uh, but I did kind of provide a report in regards to uh, short-term rental compliance. Um, I was talking um, with Chair Sullivan, and uh, she just thought it'd be good for uh, the commission. And I ended up sending this to council as well to understand kind of our process around. Uh, how we look at um, short-term rentals um, and kind of it is a seasonal type of thing that we do because there is a, a lot of them don't most of them don't operate in the winter and so once the, the year ticks over we kind of start really processing them a lot and then uh, there's details in there specifically about the two types of compliance one is um, in regards to not having like things like business licenses um, being registered with the borough bed tax those types of things and then uh, the type two is like improper use of property. So those are kind of the two things. Sometimes you deal with both at the same time. Sometimes you deal with them as separate issues. So, um, and then just also too, I included kind of how we approach that. Um, and um, like I said, we do have a pretty high level of compliance, but every year we do deal with a number of, of items. Uh, we can't get to everything at once. Um, so we do kind of prioritize those things. And so um, anyway, just wanted to, um, help you guys understand kind of the, what we do and more than happy to answer any types of uh, questions that you guys have at any any time and I know I, I discuss some of these specifically on a regular basis with uh, with the chair so um, and it is it is in code actually that we do need to notify you guys if we're dealing with compliance issues so. okay uh, anything else for the uh, report no, no. Uh, commissioners do you have any questions on this portion no okay all right it looks like we don't have any other reports, announcements, or presentations. We'll move on to the public hearings. Um, 
So at this point, uh, we public hearing commentaries are limited to five minutes per person. And after all speakers have spoken, a person may speak for a second time for not more than one minute. So you'd have to talk fast. So the first public hearing item is resolution 2023-006. Mr. Clerk, could you read the title into the record? Resolution 2023-006, recommending City Council and Kenai Peninsula Borough approval of the preliminary replat of 4th of July Creek Subdivision, Seward Marine Industrial Center, SMIC, unsubdivided remainder of Block 6, physical location 110 Olga Street, creating two lots, lots 4 and 5, Block 6, 4th of July Creek Subdivision, SMIC, Duchess replat. Okay. So to move this along, I'll need a motion to second, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2023-006. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, administration, do you have any comments at this point? Yeah, I'll go ahead and just kind of fill you in on the details um, of this replot. So attached to the commission's review and recommendation to the city council uh, and the Kenai Peninsula Borough Planning Commission is a preliminary replot submitted by the city of Seward per the request of Duchess LLC. Um, this plotting action creates two new parcels, lots four, five, and lots four and five, block six, six Fourth of July Creek subdivision, uh, SMIC, and um, it's subdividing the Fourth of July Creek subdivision um, under unsubdivided remainder of block six, also known as 110 Olga Street, Seward, Alaska, and the Seward Marine Industrial Center. Um, and the Duchess LLC is requesting this plotting action to establish a parcel lot five, which they would lease for boat storage from the city of Seward. Uh, roads and electric are currently accessible to the proposed parcels and sewer is available on the north end uh, where the proposed parcel for lease is located. However, water is not available. International fire code requires a fire hydrant to be installed if a building is constructed within a distance greater than 500 feet from an existing fire hydrant. Uh, the applicant has been informed of this requirement. The city ha has plans to extend the water and sewer lines to all the parcels in, in SMIC that do not currently have access as development and use demands. According to City Code 16.01.015, property owners within 300 feet of the requested plotting action were notified and the property was, was posted with public notice signage. Um, in accordance with borough requirements, the city must review and comment on a plot before the submittal to the borough for approval. Uh, the property is owned industrial. The lot four is 4.01 acres and lot five is two acres. Um, this, the lots currently have access to city roads and electric. Um, lot five has access to sewer. The show will be extended to lot four as development demands. Water lines and fire hydrant will be required if buildings ever built in the either current par parcel and these lots are currently vacant. <coughs> lot four and five are both access from Olga Street. Um, access could be developed from Moore Street or Dolphin Street, but is currently not established. Uh, the lots are within a flood zone D and the zone D designation is used for areas where there are possible but undetermined flood hazards. Um, this is consistent. Um, with both comprehensive um, plan and strategic um, plan. And uh, for our staff comments, uh, there was no comment from all departments with the exception of the fire department, which um, noted that a fire hydrant will need to be installed if a building is constructed on either parcel. Um, we did, again, we did follow the public noticing pr process and all, um, if there were comments, uh, they were forwarded on to the commission. And so, um, Uh, yeah, we recommend um, the commission approve resolution 2023-2003-006. Okay. Okay, I'll open for public hearing. Mr. Clerk, is anybody signed in? Uh, nobody is signed in. Anybody would like to speak? No? Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> so the applicant is... Uh, Let's see, is the applicant present? I know the city is trying to, to work with that, but do we have anybody available to discuss for the applicant? No? Okay. Alrighty. So, I guess what I'll do is I'll close the public hearing. And are there any comments from the commission? And Commissioner Sharpno, since you moved to open it, uh, the motion, would you like to speak to it? I think it's pretty straightforward. Fire department, if the building is gonna be built via uh, uh, Hydrant will need to be put in, which is makes sense, and uh, I think it's yeah, pretty straightforward. Great. Not a problem. 
Thank you. Any other commissioners have anything to offer? No? Okay. All righty. Mr. Clerk, let's call for the vote. Okay. Voting on the approval of resolution 2023-006. Verge? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Ullman? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, that resolution has been approved. Okay, great. All right, we'll move on to the next public hearing item, which is uh, resolution 2023-007. Mr. Clerk, could you read the title into the record? Resolution 2023-007, recommending the City Council update the Municipal Lands Inventory and Management Plan to include recommendations to increase day-use parking at the Spring Creek Campground, request an easement to maintain beach access to the north of the campground, and plant the area into one parcel and rezone to park. Okay, great, thank you. I'll need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve uh, 2023-007. Thank you. I'll second that. All right, great. Administration, do you have any comments? Yeah, I'll just go, go ahead and uh, give the background and justification. Um, you guys are obviously pretty familiar with this. Uh, January 24th, 2023, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public work session to discuss ways to improve the parking and beach access at the Spring Creek Campground. Uh, Spring Creek Campground is currently, area is currently used for overnight parking as well as day-use parking. The day-use parking is designated closer to the beach and limited in size. The commission, recommended, the commission recommended designating additional day-use parking adjacent to the current parking to the east and marking this area with signage. Uh, the public and commission also noted that individuals are trespassing on the beach to the north of the Spring Creek campground area that is privately owned. It was recommended that the city work with the property owner to establish a right-of-way easement that will allow public to legally access that portion of the beach. This easement would create continuous beach access from the Spring Creek camp campground area up to the Thailand south of the Seward Airport. Finally, it was noted that the long-term use of the Spring Creek campground area and beach is intended to be that of a recreational area. As such, it should be protected by platting those areas into one parcel and then uh, rezoning as park. Um, the intent was to provide recommendations to City Council on various actions that can be taken to improve the parking, establish legal beach access, and protect the future use of the Spring Creek campground area. Uh, this legislation is consistent with both the comprehensive and strategic plan. And uh, the Community Development Department staff recommends approval of the resolution, resolution 2023-007, recommending the City Council update the Muni Land Plan um, to include recommendations to increase the day use parking at the Spring Creek Campground. Uh, request an easement to maintain beach access to the North Campground and plat the area into one parcel and rezone this park. Okay, great. Um, I'll open it now to public hearing. Is anybody signed in regarding that? No? Nobody is signed in. No? Okay. Anybody would like to speak? No? Okay. All right. Well, it's, the city is the one that's looking like uh, they're uh, um, wanting to make this change, so we don't have to worry about an applicant at this point. And so I'll close the public hearing, and um, I'll take some comments from the commission. And if any amendments are necessary, please advise. Now, I would like to, if there's no objections, I'd like to add the whereases that were provided to us by uh, citizens' comments. They were all emailed. I think all the commission got a copy of those from uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Griswold. Do we have uh, any concerns or objections? No. No? Okay. Administration, can you add those in? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anything else from anybody? No? Okay. I'm going to call for the vote. Okay. Voting on the approval of resolution 2023-007. Monaco? Yes. Alden? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. Fairhead? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, that resolution has been approved. Okay, I'll move on to the next uh, public hearing item, which is the next one right in line. It's resolution 2023-008. Mr. Clerk, will you read the title into the record? Resolution 2023-008. Recommending the City Council update the Municipal Lands Inventory and Management Plan to include recommendations to improve and designate parking and access at the 4th of July Beach and plant the area into one parcel and rezone to park. Okay. I'll need a motion a second to get this going. I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 2023-008. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, administration, any comments? Yep. Um, so on January 24th, 2023, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public work session to discuss ways to improve the parking and accessibility at the 4th of July Beach. The public and commissioners voiced their concerns on the accessibility of the current parking area. The lower elevation of this parking area causes it to fill with water at various times of the year, making it difficult or impossible to use. Also, the size of the parking area is insufficient to meet the excessive use the area receives during the summer months. The commission recommended that gravel and fill be brought in to raise the level of the elevation of the parking area uh, with Sorrel Road and to designate additional parking on the parcel of the land to the north of Sorrel Road. Uh, see the attached map for reference. It is recommended to designate this additional parking area by creating a separate parcel through platting action. In the meantime, the area can be designated for parking by putting up signage and marking the area with boulders and or paint. It was also noted at the meeting that the official right-of-way to the access 4th of July Beach as designated by Platt is Delphin Street. However, this road is not consistently maintained throughout the year. Consequently, visitors to the 4th of July Beach primarily use Olga Street, which is currently platted as a private service road. The commission recommended that either Olga Street uh, be officially designated as a public right-of-way or Delphin Street should be better maintained. Currently, the area within the city limits comprising the 4th of July Beach is made up of various parcels. The commission recommends platting the 4th of July Beach area into one parcel and then rezoning it as park in order to preserve its use as a recreational area. Um, <clears throat> the intent is to provide recommendations to City Council on various actions that can be taken to improve the parking access and future use of the 4th of July Beach area. Uh, this is, these recommendations are um, consistent with a comprehensive and strategic plan. And uh, Community Development Department staff recommends approval of Resolution 2023-008 recommending the City Council update the Municipal Lands Inventory and Management Plan to include recommendations to improve and designate parking and access at the 4th of July Beach and plat the area into one parcel and rezone to park. Great, thank you. Um, I'll open this also to public hearing. Is anyone signed in? Nobody is signed in. Okay, anybody make any, want to make any comments? No? Alrighty, I'll move on. Okay, and again, like this one, this looks like the city is the applicant, so to speak, so we've already heard from the city, and I'll close the public hearing. I'll move on to comments from the commission. Uh, if the commissioners don't object, uh, we'll do the same, and like to add the whereases to this that were supplied to us by Ms. Griswold. Mm -hmm. okay. Commissioners, are we all in alignment with that? Yeah. Okay, that's good to go. All right, Ms. Clerk, we'll call for the vote then. Okay, voting on the approval of Resolution 2023-008. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Verde? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. Allman? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, that resolution has been approved. Okay, and we'll move on to the next one. We're getting right through these. Uh, the next public hearing item is Resolution 2023-009. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the title into the record? Resolution 2023-009, a resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, granting a conditional use permit to John Weitzel to construct a mixed-use commercial building with more than two apartments at 213 Fifth Avenue, original town site of Seward, south 10 feet of lot 13, and the north 25 feet of lot 14, block 9, within a central CB zoning district, central business zoning district. Okay. Um, administration. Oh, I need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2023-009. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Now, administration, do you have any comments? Yes, quite a few of them. Uh, John Weisel has applied for a conditional use permit from the Seward Planning and Zoning Commission to construct a mixed-use commercial building with more than two apartments on his property located at 213 Fifth Avenue on original town site of Seward, south 10 feet of lot 13, and the north 25 feet of lot 14, block nine. The intended use of the structure is to lease the bottom two stories for office commercial space and to use the third story as short-term rentals. In 2020, John Weiss was granted a CUP to construct a mixed-use commercial building at 213 Fifth Avenue. The conditions of the permit stated that an approved CUP shall lapse six months from the date of approval if the use for which the permit was issued has not been implemented or a building permit obtained. For this reason, John Weisel has been required to reapply for a CUP. Within the commercial business zoning district, outright allowed uses do not have specific parking requirements. 
All types of dwelling except for one apartment above a commercial building require CUP in the Central Business District. A CUP is required for uses that are recognized as compatible with the specific zoning district provided certain conditions are met. As parking is a very difficult in this area of town, this is a condition that would be required for the portion of the building used for lodging. The original parcels around 213 Fifth Avenue have been changed through the platting actions at various times, leaving 213 Fifth Avenue as a combination of, of part of lot 13 and lot 14. Seward City Code 1201.030 states that no building except a single family residence may be built across platted property lines. Since 213 Fifth Avenue is made up of the leftover portions of lot 13 and lot 14, any construction on the lot would occur across the platted property line. An official plat must be done to make this property into one legal lot before construction can occur. The applicant has complied with all the public hearing requirements of the Seward City Code 15.01.040. <clears throat> the development requirements, the proposed structure meets the zoning code development requirements, including lot coverage, Minimum, table, minimum buildable lot size, setbacks, and building height. The surrounding land use, all the lots surrounding this property are zoned central business. There's a restaurant directly to the south, and a church south of that to the north. There's a restaurant within a hotel and a fitness center. A restaurant and various shops are located to the west. Vacant lots, single family homes, and hotel are located to the east. According to the, uh, the floodplain status is according to the Kenai Peninsula flood map. The area is not located within a flood zone. For utilities, water, sewer, and power are already available to the property. Adequate fire, police, and solid waste disposal services are available to the property. City code also requires that every building or building site within the city must provide containers suitable for refuse collection, and all containers shall be watertight with an animal-proof lid. For parking, according to city code 1510215, parking lodging is required to have one parking space per guest room, plus the spaces for the principal dwelling unit. All three dwelling units will be used entirely as lodging. Each dwelling unit has one guest room, so three parking spaces will be required. If office space on the first floor or second story are converted into short-term rentals, the required one parking space per guest room will need to be provided. Parking spaces are required to be nine feet wide and 18 feet long. The plan shows three parking spaces that meet these requirements. Um, this legislation is consistent with both the comprehensive plan and strategic plan. As far as the staff comments goes uh, from the building department, uh, structural and architectural stamped engineer drawings are required. Uh, the fire department must apply for a building permit and meet city building and fire code for commercial mixed use occupancy. Uh, public works just said applicants should consider ADA access to the building. There was no comments from the harbor police or electric department. Uh, for the public notice, uh, property owners within 300 feet of the location of the proposed conditional use permit action were notified during the, of this public hearing. And um, comments, any comments um, were forwarded on to the commission. Um, the recommended conditions are as follows. Number one, the applicant shall work with city staff through the building permit process to address and accomplish any required upgrades or modifications. Prior to operation, the building will be constructed following requirements per International Fire Code and International Building Code. Structural and architectural stamped engineered drawings must be approved by the building official. Number two is no construction shall be permitted in the right of way. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall be required to plat the property into one parcel in accordance with Seward City Code 12.01.030 and shall furnish certified copies of the final plat to the building department upon application for a building permit. The applicant shall work with all city utility departments for any possible upgrades to the water, sewer, and or electric utilities prior to a cer certificate of occupancy being issued. A minimum of one parking space per guest room for each short-term rental unit will be provided for on site. Given the current plans, there will be three parking spaces required. A short-term rental permit in addition to the anticipated three will not be granted unless additional parking is provided for. Uh, number seven, all parking and maneuverability shall remain on site for the life of the use. All areas not devoted to buildings, drives, walks, parking areas, or other authorized installations shall be covered with one or more of the following lawn grass, natural ornamentary shrubbery or trees. Number nine, bear proof or bird resistant containers shall be provided for all garbage and refuge for the life of the, of the use. Number 10, per Seward City Code 1510325F, 
An approved CUP shall lapse six months from the date of approval if the use for which the permit was issued has not been implemented or a building permit obtained. The Commission may grant a six month extension upon finding that circumstances have not changed sufficiently since the date of the initial permit approval. Number 11 is modification of final approval of a conditional use permit may, upon application by the permittee, be modified by the Planning and Zoning Commission. When the, when, the when the conditions cause the condition used to no longer conform to the standards for its approval, to implement a different development plan conforming to the standards for its approval, and the modification of a plan shall be subject to a public hearing and a filing fee set by the City Council resolution. The Community Development Department staff recommends approval of Resolution 2023-009, granting a conditional use permit to John Weissel to construct a mixed-use commercial building with more than two apartments at 213 Fifth Avenue, original town site of Seward, uh, south 10 feet, lot 13, and north 25 feet of lot 14, block 9, within a central business zoning district. Thank you. Okay. I'll open to public hearing. Do we have anybody signed in? Nobody is signed in. Would anybody like to? Okay. Fun it, yeah. Grab a chair. <coughs> John Weisel, outside city limits. And uh, I'm here to propose granting another CUP to me. Um, went through some trouble during COVID and business and we have Spruce Lodge. We've uh, up and going and we're ready to take on more construction now. And um, <clears throat> I believe the building's still just like originally planned as uh, well needed in town. Um, I've had a few applicants, um, and I think uh, I think would spend plenty of changes. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, hopefully get this through. So I'm here for any questions. And okay. uh, yeah, great. I appreciate that. And as the applicant, we might want to just sit there just in case the, oh, the right. folks have the yep. um, As you're the applicant, um, is there anybody? Well, first off, is there anybody else for public hearing? Nobody, just you right now. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I'd like to do now is close the public hearing and I'd like to have any comments from the commissioners if anybody has anything for Mr. Weisel. I don't have anything for Mr. Weisel. I, um, I think it looks pretty good. The CUP lines out most of the issues that I usually find things. The parking is acceptable. I use normally like a, a trash house over the trash cans, but since this is in the alley and out of the way of street view, mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll be just fine. I have one question for you. Is this the exact same CUP as the one that was granted before? I mean, like it looks 100%. It's been a couple of years, the, but I just, yeah. Just want to double check, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember changing anything. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Just kind of concerned. So you're thinking office space for your first and second floor or retail or mix? I mean, like I've had, uh, say, like acupuncture, uh, chiropractic, you know, so that's kind of office, but um, we are, we have been addressed by some like retail, you know, um, so yeah, yeah, but uh, I don't, I don't see any applications or have had any talks with anybody with regarding food or anything, so yeah. Primarily just trying to go after office and retail. Okay. Yeah, it's just we have a lot of empty office space around, so I would be slightly concerned, you know. Oh. Around downtown, yeah, maybe so. it's. I'm. I'm hoping that. Uh, I think it's. I think it just needs to be new. So I think newer space, you know. Yeah, I'd be very yeah. excited to see a building there for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're definitely. Ready to get going, and uh, and that's why we have the plan the way it is. It's pretty generic, um, so if somebody has certain needs, you know, we'd like to uh, build around that, get them incorporated. So, uh, but yeah, definitely, I think I think I would like to finish Fifth Avenue for sure. Yeah, that will certainly help with the uh, tearing down the old building and putting up something new and. Or attractive in that area that's yes. you know, that's certainly a, it'll be a huge plus in that regard certainly absolutely yeah, yeah. commissioners anybody else have any just to say no okay thank you very much thanks okay
Okay. Mr. Clerk, I will call for the vote. Okay, voting on the approval of resolution 2023-009. Staggs? Yes. Hornset? Yes. Allman? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Verhey? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, that resolution has been approved. Great, thank you. Okay, I'll move on to the last item for the public hearing. It's resolution 2023-0010. Ms. Clerk, could you read that into the record? Resolution 2023-010. A resolution of the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Seward, Alaska, granting a conditional use permit to Coalaska Inc. doing business as QAP to extract gravel from portions of the Resurrection River located on Seward Meridian Southwest, Northeast uh, Quarter, Southwest Quarter, and Seward Meridian Southwest, West, 330 feet of Northwest a Quarter line within Seward City limits and Seward Meridian Southwest portion, Northwest a Quarter, Southeast a Quarter line within Seward City limits, excluding West, 330 feet within a Resource Management RM Zoning District. Cool. Okay. Um, I'll need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2023-010. I'll second that. Okay. All right. Uh, administration, do you have any comments? Yes. Um, so just for the background and justification, uh, Coalaska Inc. doing business as QAP has applied for a conditional use permit from the Seward Planning and Zoning Commission to extract travel from the portions of the Resurrection River located on parcels one four four three zero zero four one one four four three zero zero four four and one four four three zero zero four five any work done within a floodway requires specific permits from various organizations the applicant has already acquired all the necessary permits to perform the requested gravel extraction and the applicant has included the approved permits with their CUP application submittals according to Seward City Code 1510-226 Resource extraction, commercial surface, i.e. gravel, is allowed in the Resource Management Zoning District with an approved CUP. The removal of gravel from the river will be used for projects to improve local infrastructure. A secondary benefit is that it also will help mitigate and reduce flooding by increasing floodwater capacity in the riverbed. The applicant has, a, has complied with all the public hearing requirements of the Seward City Code 15-01040. Um, the development requirements of proposed use will not involve any development uh, to the property. The lots surrounding this property to the west and the south are zoned resource management and are vacant. The lot to the east is zoned industrial and also does gravel extraction from the Resurrection River. The lots to the north are, are not located within city limits but are owned by Coalaska Inc. as well. According to the Kenai Peninsula <coughs> floodplain map, the area is located within AE flood zone. Uh, no development is occurring within the floodplain. The appropriate floodplain permits have been acquired by the applicant. <coughs> Access to the property is from 31825 Herman Lear Road. Emergency service vehicles can access the property on site. Water, septic, and power exist on the Kenai Peninsula Borough side, but not on the parcels within city limits. Uh, parking will be located on the Kenai Peninsula Borough side of the parcel since that is the only parcel that can be accessed from the road. Um, this is consistent with a comprehensive and strategic uh, plan. Uh, there are no staff comments. Uh, public noticing was followed and any uh, comments that did come were uh, forwarded to the commission. Um, the recommended conditions are as follows. The applicant shall maintain current floodplain permits while working while work is being performed in the floodway. Per Seward City Code 1510-325F, an approved CUP shall lapse six months from the date of approval. If the use for which the permit was issued has not been implemented or a building permit obtained, the commission may grant a six month ext extension upon finding that circumstances may have not changed sufficiently since the date of initial permit approval. Modification of the final approval of a conditional use permit may, upon application by the permittee, be modified by the Planning and Zoning Commission. When change conditions cause the conditional use to no longer conform to the standards for its approval, to implement a different development plan conforming to the standards for its approval, or the modification plan shall be subject to a public hearing and a filing fee set by City Council resolution. Uh, the Community Development Department and staff recommends the approval of Resolution 2023-010, granting the conditional use permit uh, to Coalaska. Great, thank you. Um, I'll open to public hearing. Is anyone signed in or anybody want to talk? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Yes, my name is Jerry Fogg, and I haven't heard anything about the use of the Resurrection River as a salmon-bearing body of water, and how can they grant permission for driving in the river when we can't even drive an ATV across one without getting in, uh, breaking the law? So I was just wondering, has this been looked into? Yeah, they're approved by Fish and Game, and they have a very small window when they're allowed to okay. do the work that they're needed to do to make sure that they're not uh, doing that. So it is Fish and Game approved, and it's approved by the Kenai River okay. Center as well. Thank you so yeah. much. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Is anybody else signed in? Or anybody else like to talk? No? Okay. All right. So I'll close the public hearing. And do we have any comments from the commission at all? Um, well, it seems the um, access is already there, and um, the permits have to be filed correctly as we went through with the fishing game for uh, salmon. Mm -hmm. So, and gravel mitigation is kind of something that we need to keep our eyes on. It seems uh, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. And from my questioning on this, is from my understanding is that as we take the gravel out, it's, it benefits the whole area there as well as things continue to come down, and uh, it actually helps the business at the end of the road there, Metco, and stuff continuing to come through. So, from what I understand, the uh, uh, the permits and the review for the the fish and the rest is uh, seems to be a good to go. It's been planned through, so I think we're probably in, in good stead unless somebody else has something else to offer. Yeah. All right, well, Mr. Clerk, I'll call for the vote. Okay, voting on the approval of resolution 2023-010. Charbonneau? Yes. Allman? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Fairhay? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, that resolution has been approved. Okay, all right. Well, that means we're on to unfinished business, and we really don't have a whole lot of unfinished business. Um, and we have no new resolutions, but we have other, we have, we're into new business now that um, we have, this is a time that we have to elect a chair and a vice chair. It's an annual requirement per city's code of 2.30.210 bowlegs, bravo, closed bowlegs. And it states that the commission shall select a chair and a vice chair annually. And now I'm opening the floor for a nomination for a chair. Any commissioner may nominate, and I'll need a motion and a second. I would like to make a motion to nominate Commissioner Sullivan for chair. Oh, second that. Okay. All right, I'll accept that. Are there any other nominations? No? Okay. Mr. Clerk, can this be approved by a unanimous consent or with a roll call? Um, traditionally, we do it with a roll call. Okay. So I'll call for a vote to... Um, elect Claire Sullivan as chair with a term to expire February of 2024. Yes. Yeah. Ullman? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. Verhe? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Can I vote for myself? <laughs> sure. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you've been elected as chair. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll need a motion, a second now to close the nomination, and, um, oh, a correct correction, we'll use the same procedure for the vice chair. I'll need a motion and a second for the vice chair. I'd like to make a motion to elect Commissioner Verhe for the vice chair. I'll second. I'll accept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. Feels right. <laughs> okay, call for the vote, I guess. Okay, no other nominations, calling for... Um, a vote to elect Vanessa Verhey as vice chair with the term to expire February 2024. Ullman? Yes. Charbonneau? Yes. Verhey? Yes. Hornseth? Yes. Monaco? Yes. Staggs? Yes. And Chair Sullivan? Yes. Okay, congratulations. Okay. Vice chair. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks everybody for the work. And we're going to, well, the minutes have already been approved on the consent agenda. I'm going down my list. And now we have items for schedule for the April 18th work session. And it looks like, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Title 15 updates, long-term rentals, lot frontages, bunkhouses, and dormitories, and we'll start the awnings introduction. Correct. We're good to go. Does yep. everybody have anything?
to suggest otherwise? That sounds good. No? Okay. Well, I will ask Jason if you have any other input that you have as we speed along in this meeting. <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. All right. So the next thing we have is just to remind everybody, of course, of the April 18th, which we just settled on, but also, too, it's here in the council chambers. So it's uh, so far it won't be moved to the library that I know of. And then Tuesday, May 9th, will be our regular meeting at 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. And that's, it'll be rescheduled from May 2nd due to the elections being held on that day. Okay, and I'm moving on to citizens' comments. And there's no sign-in for this at all. So we're done with business, and now we're on to citizens' comments. Um, is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak? And you have five minutes uh, to make your comments. Anybody have any comments? Nope. Wow, this is great. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Okay, and so then I'll move on to the uh, the board's comments for today, and I will go ahead and go by name. And Commissioner Staggs, if you have anything. Uh, I have no comment. No, Commissioner Monaco. I have no comments. Okay. It's great to all be here. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> let you go down. Yeah, there. right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Commissioner Staggs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank the public that came out and with your opinions and of course the administration for all their hard work and everybody here it's nice to see yeah full yeah. group right. mm -hmm. tonight mm -hmm. uh, i just wanted to say thanks to uh, thanks for serving as vice chair for the last year and thanks for signing up again <laughs> and uh, looking forward to our new vice chair great thank you Shall yeah I? thanks for coming out public and administration thanks for the preparation the packets and everybody here tonight Appreciate it. Yep, and finally, I'd like to say it's great to see everybody here. It can be a little bit tedious at times trying to figure out who's going where and the rest, and administration trying to herd all these cats uh, <laughs> to make us to come to these meetings. And they do a, a, an amazing amount of work, and the fact that it is important work because all the times that we don't meet, then it delays people from getting stuff done on the in the real world out there other than just within the governmental framework here. So happy that everybody's here and we'll just continue to drive on and have a great summer I think as it's coming down our way. Okay. All right. Well with that I will adjourn our meeting at seven forty two hours. Thank you.